Related to growth, especially exponential growth, is the idea of interest. And we're going to introduce interest in this video, and then in future videos, take a look at annuities and loans, which is where it gets more interesting. But first, we're just going to ask the question, how do we calculate interest for an investment? The idea is someone will pay you to invest your money with them. If you put your money in the bank, they will pay you interest to say thank you for letting us hold on to your money, probably because they're going to reinvest it elsewhere for a higher rate. But in essence, you get paid money to stick your money in an account, and it gains money over time. There's two types of interest you can earn. And the first is called simple interest. And the idea is that you will only earn interest on the deposit or on the principal. Or another way of saying that is the starting amount of the investment. And the formula that we have to calculate the simple interest is a simple multiplication problem. The amount of interest you earn is the initial money that's put in times the interest rate times the amount of time. And then we can find the final amount by simply taking the principal amount and adding the interest to it. Another way of thinking about that is since the interest is equal to that formula, the principal amount plus the interest formula, which is PRT. And then sometimes you'll even see that P sub 0, the principal amount factored out, times 1 plus the interest rate times time. But most of the time, we'll use the first equation. So the formula for interest, PRT, and then to get the final amount in the account, we'll add the principal to the interest. And just to help us clarify as we're using this formula later, let's define what each of these variables represents. i is the interest that is earned on the account. a is what we'll often call the future value of the account or the amount at the end. The p sub 0 is often called the principal or the starting amount. R, we've seen R before. That is our interest rate. And of course, we never use percentages. It's always going to be expressed as a decimal. And finally, t is the time, and it will always be in years. And that's important that the time is always in years. So let's do one quick example. It's an easy formula. I think we only need to see one example where we can use this formula. Let's say a $500 investment. earns 6% simple interest for three months. Using our formula that interest is equal to P naught R times T, we can calculate our interest is that principal of $500 times the rate 6% as a decimal is 0 0.06, times the time, which is three months. But don't forget, time needs to be in years. So we'll divide by 12 to change those months into years. And when we calculate that on our calculator, we end up with $7.50 in interest has been earned on this account. So how much is in the account? Well, it started with 500. We add 750 in interest, and now the account after three months has 
cents. And that's kind of how simple interest works. We just calculate that principal times the rate times the time. But the truth is most investments don't do simple interest. They do something that's a little bit better. It's called compound interest. And the idea of compound interest is you can earn interest on your interest. The classic example is if you have $1,000 at 10%, you're going to gain 10% of that's 100. So that next you'll have 1,100. But now that 1,100 is at 10%. You don't just earn 10% on the 1,000. Now you earn 10% on the 1,100, which is 110. So now you've got 1,210. And now all of that is at 10% which means you'll gain 121, and you're at 1331. And then that will be at 10%. And what's really neat to observe is the first time you gained 100, the second time you gained 110, the third time you gained 121, the amount you gain is growing every time. So the interest is earning interest in future months, and it grows faster. So that's compound interest. And most accounts work with compound interest and the formula. Where we have the final amount is equal to the initial amount times 1 plus the interest rate divided by the number of compounds raised to the number of years times the number of compounds. And this becomes our second important formula for today. Let's define each of these terms really quick. First, the P sub n. That is the future value of the account, or the final amount. We also see the p sub 0. We've seen that before. It is the principal or the starting amount. We've seen r before. That's the interest rate. Of course, that interest rate needs to be written as a decimal. Our new variables are k and n. k is the number of compounds per year. In other words, how often in a year are you going to earn interest? And kind of as a side note, common compounds you'll see is compounded maybe annually. which means k equals 1. One time per year, you get your interest. Semi-annually, which means k is equal to 2. Semi-annually means every six months or twice a year. Quarterly, you'll see k equals 4, because there's four quarters in a year, three months each. You'll see monthly which is what most bank accounts do. Their k is equal to 12, 12 months in a year. And sometimes you'll see daily, which creates the most interest. That's what you see on your student loans. Most interest on your student loans, that's k equals 365 per year. So that's our k. And then the other last variable, we've seen it before, is n in simply represents the number of years. So let's take a look at a couple examples where we're using the compound interest formula.
we're going to start with $3,000 invested at 6% compounded quarterly for five years. So we've got our formula that p sub n is equal to p sub 0 times 1 plus r over k all to the k n k power. We don't know the future amount of this investment. That's what we're looking for. But we're starting with $3,000 times 1 plus the interest rate of 0 0.06 divided by the number of compounds. It says it's compounded quarterly, which means four times per year. N is the number of years, which is five, times K, which again, quarterly means four times per year. We can just type this in our calculator exactly like it is. The only thing we have to be careful of is that exponent needs to go in parentheses so that it, the calculator knows the entire thing is in the exponent, not just the five. And when we do, we find out that this $3,000 investment after five years has grown to $4,040.57. Now, it's pretty straightforward to find out how much money is in the account after so much time. But usually, we're interested in a very different question. We're interested in the question of how much to invest now to have a certain amount of money in the future. Let's say we want to make a $5,000 purchase in three years at the account's going to earn 10% compounded daily. How much do we need now to have $5,000 in three years? Well, we're still using the same formula that we've been using with compound interest. But this time, we know the 5,000 is the future value. So it goes on the left, and we're solving for the starting value, p sub 0, on the right. We still have 1 plus r. The interest rate was 10%, so 0.10, divided by the number of compounds. It's compounded daily. There are 365 days in a year. Three years times the 365. And remember, that exponent needs to go in parentheses. But this time, we can't just go for the calculator because our variable is with a whole bunch of stuff. It's multiplied by that parentheses. So we'll solve by dividing by the parentheses. 1 plus 0.10 divided by 365 raised to the 3 times 365 power. And of course, we'll do it on both sides. Exactly the same thing on both sides so that that parentheses on the right divides out. And when we do this on our calculator, again, being careful of parentheses, closing parentheses in the right place, putting the entire exponent in parentheses, we find $3,704.24 is required right now to be invested at 10% compounded daily for three years to have 5,000 in the account at the end. So we're looking at two types of interest today. In this video, we looked at compound interest and simple interest, where we took a lump sum of money and put it in an account and leave it there for an amount of time. And we want to know how much is in the account after that time passes. Try a few on the homework. Let me know if you have questions. Good luck.